It's interesting, the, the history of the cello suites, because after Bach wrote them, they languished for 200 years. No one had heard of these pieces in our time until they were rediscovered by the cellist Pablo Casals when he was a young boy, he was only 13 at the time, and he found them in a music shop in Barcelona. And he ran to his teacher and said, look what I found, these pieces. And, and his teacher had never heard of them, of course, because no one had. And he studied them for a good number of years before he even attempted to play them in public. And it was, again, another 30 or more years before he ever first recorded them. It was that fact that made them famous to cellists of today. Yo-Yo Ma played them during the uh, reading of the names for September 11th. Rostropovich was playing them during the fall of the Berlin Wall. These are pieces that, that everyone knows, even if they've not heard them before. It's, it's that kind of thing. It's like, oh yes, of course, the cello suites. They know of them. The fact that I'm now doing these perhaps is giving it another life in a, in a new medium. It's just a miracle that we even have them at all. It's just one of those things of fate. This whole project started as a result of my finding out during college years that I'd pretty much played all the decent harp repertoire by the time I was 20 years old and there was nothing more really to look forward to in terms of great music. That was a bit of a crisis for me. It was a question of do I continue with harp, do I take up other instrument, do I, what do I do? But Which is what propelled me into the world of transcribing music that didn't exist for harp on the harp. It came as a realization during those years when I actually went to Fontainebleau in France. The Fontainebleau School was a, a conservatory that was created for American students to go and study the music of Europe, European history of music and, and composition. It was a, a place that the composers went to discover their own voice, to figure out who they were in, in the relation of the history of music. Um, most notably, Aaron Copland, uh, Leonard Bernstein attended there, Astor Piazzolla, another. Attending the school in France, first of all, we, we would study in the castle, albeit the bombed out part of the castle, but nonetheless, we would be running around the same halls that Napoleon had been in and, and uh, being able to practice there and, and study there, just breathing the air while we're there was, was just exceptional. It was a really amazing time in my life. I, I almost feel like my musical life was, I was born at that point where I, I made this big discovery about myself, about music, and it sort of created my whole career without me even being aware of it. I started discovering composers other than those that I had been practicing the harp for, Bach in particular. I learned of the cantatas, the well over 200 choral pieces that he wrote for church, music that he was hired to compose every week. This music just changed my whole life forever. This was the kind of music that I would always go to for anything, just, just to listen to, to play, this was not anything I did for the harp at all. This was completely for my own personal life. It was where I had to go in my heart for my own use, my own music. And so I would take a lot of his other music, music written for other instruments, um, mostly keyboard to start with, and start transcribing them for harp. Just playing right off the page. During that process, I evidently, because it's in my notebooks, found um, the, one of the movements of the Cerebrand that moved me enough to write it out for harp. And I didn't realize this for many years <laughs> later, but they gradually kind of seeped into my life. And I would play the beginning of the first suite, because it was also used as a guitar piece, and guitar is similar to harp, so I would play those. 
After a while, it just became like I wanted to do this suite and I wanted to do that suite, and then suddenly someone said to me, why don't you do all of the six cello suites? On any given day, it would be the music of Bach that gets me out of bed in the morning. Bach's music is what I play for myself, and it's kind of what makes this, this particular recording special to me because it's something that I never had thought about performing or recording up until the last few years, even though I've been actually aware of it for 25 years. It's, it's just been creeping into my life in a big way. Bach is the epitome of the greatest composer for me. There are arguments from other people, Mozart for instance, but Bach is what sends me. This is the reason that I stay in music, and the reason that music stays in me is because of his music, is what he wrote. And there's so much of it that I have never even heard or looked at at this point, and that I get to look forward to that still. Recording the cello suites is presumably a very big project. Uh, for, for a cellist in particular, ask any cellist, they would agree with me, but uh, for a harpist it's like twice as high because we're dealing with other issues and the fact that as far as I can tell no one has done it before. I would say recording these suites has definitely been a high point in my life and this high point has been going on for a while. It feels kind of nice to be finally putting it out there. <laughs>